Hi everyone, my name is Angela and this video is going to be about how you match with a residency program and what that kind of process looks like, kind of a broad overview. Uh, just to remind you guys, uh, these are just weekly chats that I'm going to have on pharmacy residency. Um, I'm going to go through a lot of different topics and um, I'm hopefully going to go through the process here. Match day is coming up next week. So even if I don't match though, I'll kind of give some videos on what the process was like because I think it's really helpful to hear firsthand from a student who's going through it now, at least in the US, and to see what that process is like. Um, I'm interested in ambulatory care and academia, so I'm pursuing a residency because I wanna be a clinical pharmacist in those areas and really um, get that concentrated experience and build my skills. So check out some other, my, other of my videos where I describe kind of my career, career interests and what programs I was going into. But I'm using notes here to talk about this match process and what it's like and what it's all about. So there's a program called Forecast or an organization called Forecast, and that's um, where you're going to be applying for residency programs. Uh, that they have tons of instructions on how you apply there. If you're gonna go onto Forecast and figure out what you need to do to apply the correct way, you're gonna get a ton of different instructions. So I'm gonna do a different video on Forecast in and of itself and kind of what I did and how it worked or maybe didn't work. But basically, um, I mentioned in a previous video that ASHP runs a lot of the residency accreditation and processes of matching. And so as you look for a program on that ASHP website, you're gonna find a code that's going to help you find the program on this forecast website. So that's how you're gonna link the two, but forecast is where you're going to be actually putting in your information, um, putting in your programs that you want and attaching your documents. And once you've applied and done that, then you're kind of past forecast, you don't use it again. Unless you do PGY2 uh, applications, you go through forecast as well. But the forecast portal opens around November. I'll link the website below and typically they announce the dates that they open and close for the residency year, you know, application year. Uh, they announce them very early so you know when it's going to be opening. It's typically, yeah, around November. But basically uh, each program will have its own requirements and let's say I'm applying to a program and they want me to have a cover letter or letter of intent and also attach a presentation or a slideshow or some supplemental questions. Those will all be done through forecasts and so each program will have a cover letter or a letter of intent, which I'll talk about in another video. And then if you have supplemental documents, you upload them with that program on the forecast. But then there's just your basic application, which is kind of like your CV or your resume into their timeline. They ask about your work experience, your volunteer experience. So I basically was going through my CV and my resume and trying to fill in the gaps uh, on forecast, but that's kind of like your main application profile that everyone will see, every pro program will see, that's not specific to each program, it's just about you. So then after you use the forecast system to uh, find all your programs and submit that, um, you do have to pay uh, for each program application. It's some kind of lump sum for about four or five programs and then each additional one is an additional fee. So um, it, it does cost to, to use this program and to apply. And so that comes into consideration whenever you're applying for programs. But after you submit those and you've solidified where you want to apply and you've paid and you're done, then you will begin the process of interviewing. And so via whatever email you entered, you'll get emails from programs that will say, hey, you know, we, um, well, we, we saw your application. Um, however, we cannot offer you an interview. And so you'll know that, that didn't work. Or you'll have a program say, hey, we got your application and we'd love to um, offer you an interview. Would you accept? And they just do it a ton of different ways. Sometimes I've had interviews where they click a doodle poll and then you go and find a time that works well for you. Or they'll say, it's first come, first serve. Here are six days where we're interviewing candidates. What works for you? And so if you're on rotation, you're going to have to balance that. If you're not on rotation, you'll just have to balance your other interviews and try to schedule them at different times kind of strategically. And uh, there's going to be a ton of some videos on interviews. That was a huge prep and huge process for me. So I'll definitely speak on that later. But um, usually in late December, early January is when you'll get those emails back because there is a hard deadline for different programs as far as when you have to submit applications. It's not just all on one day. Each program have different days uh, that they'll probably have um, them do. But usually it's late November, early January that programs have your applications due. So your interviews will be scheduled and this year because of COVID, I was virtual for every single one. And that's what ASHP had recommended programs to do, but most pro most programs of students who are friends of mine were doing them virtually. Uh, so if you need to travel in the future coming years, I'm guessing that they'll try to do that once because in-person usually is a better fit, a better experience as far as knowing if you fit there. 
but that'll pay play into uh you know if you're gonna apply more places you're gonna have to travel or if you apply out of state versus in state but that's just another factor in the whole mass pro match process and then uh you really during that interview process you're going to decide what programs do i like the most what programs do i think i really fit with and that i'm really excited to hopefully be a resident at so you make kind of a list so let's say you have five interviews and you have a list throughout your interview processes uh, about which one you like the most after you make that list in your head or on paper then you're going to go put them in the nms match system so we have ashp forecast and then nms nms is kind of like the final steps or the national matching system i think is the abbreviation but you uh, put your programs that you want to rank into this list and on the website and then you have to certify your list or basically solidify yep these are the programs and this is the order i want to be in um, i'm going to go ahead and uh, put that in for my match process and then they will do the same so each program will have let's say 30 interview applicants depending on what program you're going to they'll say okay we saw all these applicants and these are our ranks of who we like the most and all the way down and um, i'm going to go more into that match process at some point but you know kind of how you should rank and what you should take into consideration because some people will say you know only rank the places that you would definitely want to go to or that you're excited about others will say i'll go anywhere just as long as i get a residency program and one thing that i learned in ashp mid-year for a virtual session was you know any program that is credified or certified by ashp as a accredited program is a quality program so you, you know the education opportunities are there if it's accredited it's just yeah could you commit your uh, yourself to a year of a residency training there. So anyway, you rank them, they rank you, and then it's actually in your favor when it comes to which one wins. It's in the resident or the student, whatever, applying if their favor. So if uh, you rank a program very high um, and they rank you kind of lower, um, there's a whole process of how it works, but your preferences get put first when it comes to when it comes to programs and which one you match with. And so match day uh, is usually in March. And um, yeah, for like I mentioned, it's next Friday or it's coming up here pretty soon. So just to give you an idea, so that's a broad overview of the match process because once you get your match, um, it's, it's via email and you find out which program you're going to and you have to accept that program. It's like contractual uh, obligation for you when you sign up for this whole match process and you sign up for forecast, you're saying, yep, when I go through this match process, whatever I'm matched with, I will, I will accept because if you reject it, there's all kind of implications with that. So it is really important that you're matching or sorry, you're ranking programs that you are pretty sure that you can see yourself at because otherwise you're going to have a, you're gonna be in big trouble. So my own experience, I applied to 16 programs and I was only going to apply to about 12 or 14, but with COVID and how different it was, I felt like it was going to be more competitive and it wasn't that much more expensive for me to apply to a few more programs. So I applied to 16 and I got six interviews and I ranked them all. Uh, I liked each program, I could see myself at each one. And um, how I knew which programs I liked more than the others, um, a good uh, tip I got from someone who was going through this process said, talk to the same person after each interview. And so they can kind of know how you sounded or what you thought about programs. And then they can tell you even at the end, like, oh, you know, you really you really sounded super excited after this interview. Um, I wonder if you should rank them. Or I really feel like I know you and I know that you would do well in this place. So I feel like you should rank them in a certain place. Of course, you have to make the final decision for your life and what you're going to rank. But that was a that was a good tip. Um, during the interview process, I really tried to feel it out. I really tried to imagine myself working with these people every day that I was talking to and imagining myself in those learning experiences and really see if I liked the way I felt doing that. And then I just kind of just looked at the program again, did a final rundown of, okay, what's the work like? What's the learning like? What's the culture like? Um, how do I all balance that within what I want in my future career and future learning opportunities? So um, I will share next week what the results are. And um, if I have to go through the phase two process, then I'll do that because I'm pretty committed to trying to get into residency. Um, but if I don't, then I'll just keep on going and share those results and share, um, I likely won't share if I do get a program, what the program is, but I'll just share, you know, kind of the learning opportunities and where I'm going to be headed. But thank you for watching. Um, I hope this was helpful. Please like it if it was or comment or share um, the video and tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what you're interested in hearing about, but otherwise I'll just keep going through different topics that I think are important and helpful. So thank you guys.